So once we have the infection network set up, we can now move on to creating the boxes. So we want to have on each of these points one box. And we can do that by using copy to points node. Okay, so copy to points. And now if I zoom in, you can see we have probably too many points. So I want to go back to my points from volume and increase the point separation even more. So we can reduce it later on, but for now, for the first test, this increases so that it's quite fast. Okay, so point separation is three. So in the solver, I also need to change the uh, search radius to, for example, 3.5. And let's play to see if it worked. Uh, no, I need to pick a new point. Okay, so let's pick a new point. So I'll pick a point 436, 436, enter. Okay, great. So now it works and we can delete the unused points and then copy to points. So copy to points, what it does is it copies a geometry onto each one of these points. So the first input is the primitives to copy, so the geometry. The second input is the points. So we can plug in the points. And for the first input, we need to create a box and also a transform. Okay, and then we plug it in here. And now we need to uh, switch on visibility on the copy to points. Okay, hey, great. So you can see all these boxes in here, but they are definitely too small. So in your transform node, and I'll do all the changes, scale changes in the transform node instead of the box. I, I don't want to change the box. I only want to change the transform node. I will increase the uniform scale. Okay, so you can see that now it looks much, much better. But the problem with it is that Whenever I change the number of points, I will have to adjust the uniform scale as well. So what I can do is actually copy this parameter and paste it in the points um, option in our points from volume node, so point separation. Okay, so point separation is three. And if I change this three it's you, you can see that they are exactly the size that we want them to be so there are no gaps in between they are not intersecting so this is exactly the value you need to we need to use so what i can do is right click and copy parameter i'm doing that in box transform node on uniform scale so right click copy parameter then move up to the points from volume select it and then right click on the value from point separation and paste relative reference. So what it does now is it links this value to our scale of the box. So whatever we type in here is also going to appear in the point separation. Okay. So you can see that the boxes are smaller, but the point is also in a different, in a different uh, place. So let's fix this as well. So instead of linking our point in here, we, uh, we're going to use a group node. So before our first attribute wrangle, let's create a group. And this is going to be our start group. And also let's rename it to start Point, points, okay. And this group is going to use, so let's display so that we can see it. This group is going to use points, so group type is points. And then you can either pick points manually or type them in here, but we don't want to use it. So let's disable this. We want to use a bounding region. So what a bounding region allows us to do is create a box. You see it's quite small. So let's take this tool here and let's increase the size of this box. Okay, so you can either increase it in the viewport or you can type 
new values here. So for example, 50 by 50 by 50. And you can see that all the points inside this bounding box are selected. So I want to create a bounding box somewhere here, so close to the ground, so that our starting points are these ones in here. So it doesn't matter what, uh, how many points I have, I'm always going to pick the points here at the bottom uh, of the rig. Okay, so this group is called start points. So let's now go to the attribute select, uh, sorry, attribute wrangle, and then delete the group and pick start points group from our drop down menu in here. So now you can see that it selected these points that we specified in the group, uh, in the group node. Okay, and let's move to the bottom and let's uh, select and display copy to points. So now we want to do exactly the same thing as we did before, but apply this infection and the boxes to an animated rig. So let's go back to the top of our network. And we want to replace this file node with something called agent. So agent is what we use for importing FBX files, so animated files. So let's go back to the beginning of the network, display the agent, and then scroll down, and where it says input, we need to make sure it's set to FBX because that's the file extension, FBX. And now I can click on this icon here and pick my file. Okay, and let's select the agent again and click a spacebar and F to find it. And now when I play, I cannot see an animation. And this is because in card clip, we need to make sure it's set to Mixamo.com. Okay, great. And you can see that I made my uh, timeline a bit shorter. And this is because so it's 79 frames. And this is because my animation just finishes after frame 79. So there's no point uh, showing the, the rest of the frame. So the length of my, uh, of my timeline is 79. Okay, then I plug in the agent to the convert node. So now I can convert this geometry to polygons. And this is because Houdini Burst works with polygons, especially for simulations. Okay, then I have the transform node, which doesn't do anything. And then I have points from volume. And when I zoom in, you can see there are no points here. And this is because uh, this geometry is much smaller. So if I zoom out, it's much smaller than our initial file. See, it's tiny. So we also need to make sure that the point separation is lower. So if I select the transform node and reduce this number to 0.1. Okay, now you can start seeing the boxes. So maybe reduce it even more. All right, cool. So now we have all these points here. So let's go back to the top. So points from volume. So now let's have a look at these points and what they do. So I'll switch on point numbers and zoom in. And let's just remember this point number here. So it's 218. Now when I play or move one frame forward, you can see that this point disappears. And this is because when I use points from volume, they try to fill this volume, so this 3D model, but then their position changes over time. So for each frame, it's random. And we need to make sure they don't do that. We need to make sure they stick to where they were at the, on the first frame. So let's switch off display point numbers. And to do that, we're going to use something called point deform. Okay. And we have three inputs here. First, mesh to deform. Second, rest point and third input can be the animated geometry so for first input with a ge geometry we take uh, as reference the second one is the points we want to snap to the geometry and the third one is the animation so once we apply these points 
to the still geometry, we can then animate it and the points will stay in the same place on that geometry. So we need to create these three groups. So first of all, after the transform node, we'll drop down something called time shift. And the reason why I'm using time shift is because I need to make sure that this uh, model for the first input is not animated. It just stays like this. So it's a still frame in the first frame. So right click on the frame and delete channels. Okay, so right click where it says frame and delete channels. And then I want to make sure it's set to frame one. And now when you scroll the timeline, you will see that there is no animation. Okay, great. So now we need points from volume. So they will fill in this volume. And now I need to create null just to know which group it is. So this one, let's rename it to out points. So out points is going to be our, um, our first input. Okay. Then the second input is the geometry. So we need to again create no and rename it to out geo, plug it into the second input. And then finally, we have our animated geometry. So again, we create the null. And this is going to be out animation and we plug it in to the last input. So now when I switch it on and play it, okay, you can see that our geometry is moving, the points are moving, but then I, when I zoom in, you can see that they do not change their position. So this point is zero it, it will stay in this place. All right, but a few errors we can see here is, for example, this part. And this is uh, because Houdini tries to calculate some things and it doesn't work very well sometimes, so we need to adjust it manually. So I'll adjust it right here so you can reduce the number of maximum points or increase it. You can increase the minimum points. I'll just increase that. You can also increase and reduce the, the, the radius. Okay, so you need to find the best settings for your setup. And now we plug in our point, uh, point deform to the start group, so to the rest of the network. So now when you play uh, the timeline, again, you can see that something is not working as it should. So let's find the error. So let's display the point deform, okay? I can see the animation here. So let's check on the group. Yeah, it's working here. In the attribute, the first attribute triangle. All right, it's working here as well. Then the solver. Okay, so this is where it stops working, in the solver. So let's go inside that solver and let's see what happens here. So what Houdini does is it executes this so our formula based on a previous frame. So it doesn't know, it doesn't take into considerations uh, into consideration any keyframes. If you want to use the keyframes, you need to use input one. So this uses the position of our geometry, also the keyframes. So let's plug this one in to the first input of attribute wrangle. Let's go back. Okay, so now you can see we have the animation but we don't have the infection effect. So let's go back inside again. So definitely something is not right. So for our calculations, we need to take the previous frame nodes, but for the animation, for the movement of the points, we need to take input one. So let's use something called point, alt point, point alt node. And we want to use this node, um, to combine these two nodes. So first of all, we plug in the first source, which is previous frame, 
And then the second source, which is the input, we don't need this connection here anymore. So previous frame goes into input one, input one goes into input two, and then we display point one. Okay, so now in the position, we want to tell Houdini what it should do for each point. So the position we're taking from this node here. Okay, everything else we take from this node here. So we need to change the values for position to dollar sign tx, which is translate x, and then two, which is the number uh, of the the input number. Okay. And I will paste it in the second input uh, in the second value, which is ty, because we have x, y, and z. And then in the third one, we'll have z. Uh, z. Okay, so it's tx, ty, and tz. And then we plug in the point to attribute wrangle, display attribute wrangle, go back to our main scene, and now display it. Okay, so something was wrong. All points are selected. So let's fix it. Okay, of course, our bounding box, you can see it's huge. So our bounding box includes our whole geometry, and we don't want that. So we need to resize this bounding box. So just scroll down and make it maybe five by five by five. Okay, we need even smaller, two by two by two. Okay, and we need to move it up. Oh, okay, it needs to be even smaller than that. Brilliant, so now we have the animation, we have the boxes, we have the infection effect. The last thing left is the simulation.